Hello everybody, it's Monica Heltz with your Thursday update. Um, so if you are interested in a COVID metric review, you're gonna need to check out our Tuesday review. Joshua Robinson, our epidemiologist, is the one that does those. Uh, in the meantime, I will welcome everyone back who may have traveled over spring break. Um, so welcome back. I hope you had some safe travels um, or that you stayed home safely. Um, at any rate, I wish everybody safety. Um, also, welcome back to our junior high students, who uh, many of whom are coming back to school at 100% for the first time. Um, it is a little crowded in there, but we have gone out and done inspections. Teachers are doing a great job. The principals are doing a great job of keeping everybody as spaced out as they possibly can. Um, and uh, and we're really proud of them for all the efforts that they have um, that they have made. We do continue to monitor our COVID metrics. Again, those reviews are on Tuesday, but we are particularly uh, monitoring for the next week or two as we see if there's going to be any fallout from the spring break travels. I hope not. Um, our testing site was real busy um, the week before HSC went on spring break, um, and we had a bump on Monday. Um, but other than that, the, we're not seeing a whole lot of people getting, getting tested, so that's um, hopefully a good sign. Um, in vaccine information, I would encourage everyone to watch our, watch our dashboard. Um, we update it every Friday with our vaccination rates. We have set a, a goal for the city of 85% of our residents getting vaccinated, and we are monitoring by age group. You can look at that on our dashboard. Um, and uh, I think we've, we've had over 30% of, almost 40% of our residents have at least been able to get their first vaccine, so that's great. Um, I am anticipating that in the next couple of weeks, um, our residents who are 12 years of age and older may be able to get the vaccine. We are waiting uh, for that news. They, Pfizer has submitted for emergency authorization use of uh, the Pfizer vaccine in ages 12 and up. So that is a possibility. In the meantime, everybody 16 and up uh, should be able to get a vaccine. We do have open appointments as early as Saturday. Um, we have some next week as well, so please log into rshot.in.gov and get your appointment scheduled if you haven't done so yet. Um, we also are starting to make plans for um, having increased availability of vaccine and going out uh, and visiting different community groups, organizations, businesses, uh, churches. Um, any, any of you who are part of those types of, of uh, organizations, feel free to fill out one of the forms on our website. We are starting to collect information about groups that may be interested in having us come to you or having a special block at our vaccination site for your group. So if that's of interest to you, um, fill out the form and we'll be compiling that information and, and starting uh, that process here over the next couple of weeks. Um, for Saturday, we do have a Johnson & Johnson clinic scheduled, um, but we will not be using Johnson & Johnson due to the nationwide pause on the use of that vaccine. So anybody scheduled for our Saturday clinic will be getting Pfizer with a second dose to be given on May the 8th. So pay attention to that. We will, there should be an automated uh, message going out to everyone with an appointment um, from the state kind of explaining that. Um, so I did want to talk for a minute about the Johnson & Johnson pause um, on the vaccine following uh, six events um, of blood clots out of the 7 million shots given. So again, this is an incredibly rare situation that has happened. Um, it does appear that there's some kind of trigger associated with the vaccine, but again, it's six, uh, six persons out of the 7 million shots given, at least that's what's been reported. Um, all of those persons were women. There was one death in that group, um, and they all had a, a simultaneous condition of having low platelets. Um, that condition does require a specific treatment, um, so it should not be treated with heparin. Um, the CDC and the Indiana State Department of Health have sent out alerts through their network. Um, on average, the events were nine days after receiving the vaccine. Um, so this is the purpose of the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. We have that system in place for all vaccines at all times so that when these things, you know, when we start to see any kind of patterns or anything with um, adverse events, then we can investigate them and make sure um, that we're taking all the necessary precautions and that the benefits of the vaccine still outweigh the risks. Um, so the Committee on Immunization Practices did hold a meeting yesterday, um, Wednesday, uh, to review this information and data. They did not make a vote yesterday um, on their recommendations, so they're going to have another meeting next week where they will hopefully make a vote. In the meantime, all Johnson & Johnson clinics are on pause, so if you're looking for Johnson & Johnson, I cannot tell you when it will be available. Um, but uh, we'll keep you updated with information as we know it. If you are worried about having had the Johnson & Johnson vaccine recently, um, uh, what you need to know is that if you've had it in the last three weeks, 
um, you would need to contact your medical provider or potentially go to the emergency department if you're experiencing a very severe headache, abdominal pain, leg pain, or shortness of breath. Um, so those are symptoms of a blood clot or a venous thromboembolism, and uh, you would need to do that whether or not you had the Johnson & Johnson vaccine within three weeks. But those uh, are the typical symptoms of a blood clot. Again, severe headache, abdominal pain, leg pain, shortness of breath. Um, blood clots can lodge anywhere in your body and, um, and cause some serious trouble. So just some information about those. Um, over 100,000 people die of blood clots each year in the United States, and over 900,000 people experience them. They are not um, they are not a joke, they are not fun, and they are very, very dangerous. So I, I want to make sure everybody understands to take these kind of things seriously. R typical risk factors for blood clots are um, that you're older, that you're obese or overweight, um, perhaps you have a family history or perhaps uh, cancer, uh, pregnancy is a pretty high risk factor, smoking, birth control, uh, having trauma or being immobile for long periods of time. So a lot of people, um, you know, so this is why we recommend that you get up and stretch if you're on a long road trip or if you're on a long airplane ride um, so that you're moving those muscles so that um, blood isn't, isn't pooling and, and clotting in your legs and that kind of thing. So um, again, blood clots are very serious, but uh, with a Johnson & Johnson vaccine, I, I want to stress the rarity of that event that this has happened um, or been reported in with six events out of the seven million shots given. Um, so just things to keep in mind as we move forward, and we'll see what the Committee on Immunization Practices recommends. Uh, we'll keep you updated. I hope everybody stays safe. Take care. Thank you so much for listening. Good night.